interesting question comes up when you want to ask, how do I take an, AD, an ADC or DAC and test it experimentally? And obviously this really comes up in practice at first because people want to know, how would I simulate such a structure? So when we look at these things, we have to ask some questions, right? And so you go, well, how would I do that? And usually the case is I want to either test, say, an NBIT DAC or an NBIT ADC. And so as a result, I think, well, okay, I'd like to, one way to approach it, just have a direct measurement of the INL and the DNL, right? The integral nonlinearity and the differential nonlinearity. Just do a code sweep and then sort of find out what the errors are. Well, and knowing that I'm building an NBIT DAC, I'm not really expecting the linearity is typically much higher than that. There are some times I do, and you then modify these concepts accordingly. But one, what you end up finding is there's usually multiple approaches. It could be either be an, a DAC or an ADC, and I'm showing just two particular ways of many different permutations. And I can either do it such that I have an analog input and an analog output, right, and then compute an error of that, or I could have a digital input and a digital output and then compute the digital error of that. Um, and typically I often want to compute this, these, com these things directly before I'm feeding it in, if possible. Um, often I can build that dedicated struct that hardware and circuitry much faster there than I can um, in larger sort of other computing structures. But again, depends on what you're building, right, and what your constraints are. And so a lot of times I might go, well, here I have, you know, if I have an n bit one, maybe I have a known DAC that's n plus two bit that runs at least to that same uh, frequency. Or I have an ADC that's known that's a n plus two bit. And n plus two gives you sufficient enough to go, yeah, I've got plenty of linearity and plenty of ways to see even sort of sort of sub bit questions that are going on. Um, and so given that, say I'm building and you might imagine you're building a DAC to maybe be maybe a lower cost version, or I have one really good one and I want to build several others, or there's a lot of times when this shows up. Uh, if you think about it, um, there's many different cases where there's a known good for a structure. And so I might put my initial DAC there, which goes from a digital input, and then goes an analog output analog output, which then that goes into an ADC, I get the digital values, I have maybe a digital subtraction here, and then I look at the digital errors, which is actually kind of useful because now it's a very low bit representation of what's coming out. And hopefully, if it's a good M bit structure, I'm only seeing like flickering on the, on the last two bits. That would be great. That's what you'd expect. You could also do it in an analog case where maybe I'm going to put an, a ramp on the input. I can also do a sinusoidal test, which is one of the other things that we'll talk about you know, one of the other ways to do tests. And then I know I'm going to have n digital bits, which I put into an n plus 2 bit DAC. Again, I just don't, I just make the last two bits zero. And then that gives me an, an analog output, and then I can subtract and out I go. And so there's some trade offs you get here depending on what you're building. But basically, from these errors, I can get a pretty good measure of what INL is, right? Because remember, INL is the difference between the ideal input and the actual out and the actual the ideal output and the actual output and DNL is like between levels and steps so I can get both of these very quickly from these measurements and so this works well and experimentally it works extremely well uh, in simulation it, just, it works fine it just takes a while typically because then you're going through every single code and that certainly causes some stress at times on the other hand, the other way to approach it, and sometimes you'll still even use it with this first approach, is a sinusoidal input. And in that case, I have a certain amount of noise and distortion that I'm looking at at the output from that single frequency. So I put in a single frequency, perfectly linear system, what do I expect? That frequency out with some gain, right? Gain and phase shift. Well, if I get other things like distortion or noise added to it, then I know that that's due to something of the processing. That's due to the DAC or the ADC. And that directly connects to what your INL and your DNL level is. Now, typically, this might be an approach you would use uh, for certain high performance cases where I just don't have a DAC or an ADC, and I'm going to try to put this into a, into a very high-end spectrum analyzer and hope I can find what's going on here. I may even do some interesting things in terms of modulating some of the aspects down so I can get different ways of measuring it. That happens all the time, and there's some wonderful things that people do, particularly think about the people who have to make your ADCs and DACs today that sit in scopes, 
how did they build those in the first place? It's pretty incredible work if you look at it closely. So something for you to for anyone to kind of think about and notice if you're doing high ends of it. But the other place this gets used a lot is in simulation because the simulation time just drops because you can really make this a lot simpler. And that helps in some cases and sometimes it's valid, sometimes not, but and it gives you a measure of the nonlinearities, it gives you a measure of the INL and DNL. The problem is, is it's not perfect connections, right? And so you have to kind of infer some things here. So the harmonics often come out of INL. The shifts in noise, like added noise levels, tend to be more DNL, because if you think about it, DNL is more like randomness between, between levels, where an INL might be like an overall nonlinearity. But I'll be honest, lots of people have slightly different perspectives because it's a little bit artistic. But this is a technique that is extremely powerful and used all over um, these approaches. So this is typically when people talk about DAX and ADCs, this is how they look at it. By the way, almost every single spec then in terms of the way you're going to look at your DAX and how they're specified and how they're approached is going to be along these lines. So if you're taking a DAC and you want to use it in a certain way, what you're going to find is that it's, these are the measurements of how it was figured out. And so then you ask, well, how is this similar to the problem actually solving? And that turns out to be very, very important going forward.